Okay, today I am going to make a step-by-step -step video about how to put together your very first basic solar battery backup. Um, like with any solar system, you need to know what your needs are. Uh, for me, I am not powering a house, I am not powering a fridge, I am powering a 100 watt radio. And even then, that is only when there is no power. So this is purely a backup system um, that's capable of handling that, plus a little more, depending on the math and how much wattage I use. So I'm going to give what is hopefully a very definitive step-by-step -step in what you need to purchase and how to put it together and it functioning. So this is a 50-watt solar panel. I got this for 90 bucks in the mail. And you can see on the back are, hang on, are the connectors. They go right there. So about 90 bucks for that. Then there is the deep cycle battery. Uh, this was about 200 bucks, including shipping. You can also get these at AutoZone. Uh, these are really good. These are ones that you can tip over. Well, you shouldn't be tipping them over, but in case they tip over, it's not going to leak like a typical car battery. Uh, this is obviously the most pricey item. It's also your most, one of your most important items. Then we have 10 gauge wire. Um, could not find this at Home Depot whatsoever. Uh, had to find it online. Um, 10 gauge wire. You can use 12 gauge, but um, everyone recommends 10. This is nice because it's all paired up and it's nice and neat. Then the next very, very important piece is your solar charge controller. This is uh, where the power from the from the solar goes in, then goes out to the battery, and then this can go out to a device. You don't necessarily need to have stuff output from here um, if you are going to be running uh, DC, but if you're going to be going AC, then you need this guy, the inverter. And so that goes right off the battery. Uh, you also need little things like the solar connectors. These will connect your wires to the connectors on the back of the solar panel. And also very small but very important 30 amp fuses. We are working with electricity. If you're wondering why you need a fuse, you should not be doing this project. So uh, those are the basics and also little blunt splices to kind of connect uh, the fuses in with the, with the circuit. So those are the basics and I will assemble this now. All right, let's start by putting it all together. We will start with the solar panel and work downstream. First thing we're going to do is connect the wires to the solar connectors. Uh, now this may seem obvious, but you're going to want the positive to go to the positive, uh, which means know where your positive is and make sure you're going to the right female connector and same thing with the negative and then there'll be standard crimping in of the two and then we'll connect them to that and then continue to work downstream all right now we are ready to connect the wires to the solar panel um, it's rather obvious um, and I can't do it with one hand so obviously male to female female to male because that's the way these things are made um, so we'll do that, then we'll keep working on. All right then, the next stop in our train is connecting the wires into the solar charge controller. Um, they will go in these inputs here. We're gonna be going into the positive and the negative. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I probably could have gone with 12 gauge wire. Um, the 10 gauge is, to be perfectly honest, uh, overrated for what my usages are um, so but anyway so I'm going to have to shoehorn this stuff in so we'll see how this goes it may be uh, uh, it might take me a while um, how it goes in are there are screws here that open and close the terminals on this side and so uh, you insert the wire screw it down on both sides and then you carry on by doing the exact same thing going off to your battery all right, that actually went uh, far easier than I thought. Um, make sure that when you uh, connect this, take the screw the whole way out so it leaves 
uh, the input completely open so the wire will fit. Um, keep the leads pretty short because you want the uh, insulation uh, to go inside, obviously, uh, the controller. You don't want any bare wires sticking out. So uh, we'll just uh, rinse and repeat and keep moving forward. All right, now we have effectively connected our solar panel to our solar charge controller. Now we will do the wiring from the controller to the battery. Okay, so the next step is going to the battery. Now the thing is, with this controller, as with most controllers, maybe even all controllers, um, again, power is coming in here from the panel, going out to the battery through here, but, it's not, but the way this works, it doesn't just go out, it also can go back in and then out to your device or anything which turns it into AC or whatever. So, since there is power that's going to be coming out of the battery, it is important to put in 30, 30 amp fuse. 30 amp fuse, this is rated for 30 amps, we keep everything at 30 amps. So, because, and you want to keep the fuse as close to the battery as you can, um, because if anything funny happens on this end, you spill water on your radio, the cat pees on the controller, um, anything craziness happens on this end, you want the fuse to blow away from everything else. So, I'm just going to hook these all up, standard butt, uh, butt splice going off to your connector, and that will be the next step. All right, so we are now ready to connect the charger, I mean the controller, to the battery. Uh, we're not going to actually connect it, but it is ready to be connected. Um, the thing that hung me up before is um, this. The only part that I got from Radio Shack. It takes the little mini 30 amp fuses, which no one seems to carry. So Radio Shack, you have failed me for the last time. So thanks to my friend Sid, I got another uh, fuse box. You just go right in there. There you go, just like that. Because remember, the power is going to be coming both in and out through this. So we need a fuse. And we try to keep the fuse as close to the battery as practical. And there we go. So obviously, back to there and to positive. So now we are going to wire from the controller out to the radio. All right, now we're ready to connect the uh, controller to my power supply on my radio. Um, again, there's a number of ways to get the, uh, the power out. Uh, this is one of them. The other is using um, the inverter. Um, now again, the inverter is really easy. It's got a built-in uh, fuse and all the rest of it. So, I mean, a built-in breaker. And uh, that's probably the easiest, but it also gives off uh, RF noise. So I won't be using that for my radio. I'll just use it for anything else that needs uh, AC. So um, we'll hook this up and we should be ready to go. Okay, now that we have everything all set up, um, this is not where the panel's living, but we see this being energized by the big old sun and power is going into the controller. And as this comes out of the controller, it goes into the battery. We can already see that it's already charging. And you know the controller lets you know if all of a sudden it's off. And there it is. And then uh, out power can go will go out. And that will go to my device. And that's it. Obviously, this is not how it's going to live. It's going to be, I'll put it in a little go box so I can um, also use it with a portable uh, solar uh, solar panel. So uh, that's it. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, uh, just send me an email and uh, 7-3. Cheers.